This image is going viral on Twitter and has inspired today's video. Despite undergoing several nerfs in Mortal Kombat 1, Homelander is still dominating tournaments and irritating everybody. So today, let's rank the most annoying characters in Mortal Kombat 1. Because I see too many people online getting mad over dumb things, like the election, which is just goofy. I choose to care about real problems, like annoying characters in fighting games. So let me know in the comments section which fighting game character annoys you the most, and without any further ado, let's begin. I think we all know who's going in the number one spot, Homelander. This character is an unstoppable force of nature who's good at everything. If you try to run away, he can zone you. If you want to zone him back, he can counter zone you. And once he's in close, he has plus frames and a three-way mix-up. So eventually, you're getting comboed and it's going to hurt a good amount and guarantee a second setup because he keeps you close. And as mentioned earlier, Homelander's already been nerfed and he's still this good. I'm going to say it, remove the command grab. Change it from an unblockable to just a regular attack. I don't get why Homelander has a three-way mix-up and constant plus frames and crazy keep away. But that's just my opinion. If you have any good ideas on how to nerf Homelander, let me know in the comments section. Because next up, it's time to talk about Reiko. This guy annoys people at all levels of play, which makes him special, and it's all thanks to two abilities, his projectile and command grab. Obviously, any character with a strong unblockable is going to be annoying, but on top of that, Reiko has the best projectile in the entire game for some reason. In fact, Reiko might have one of the best projectiles in fighting game history, so he's dangerous from afar and also up close. And even though Homelander is a stronger character overall, Reiko is annoying at all levels of play, which makes him quite unique in that regard. Whether you're a beginner or a veteran, you can find ways to annoy people with Reiko. But next up, let's talk about Cyrax. This character has an infinite, like straight up, touch of death combos. One hit, and she just wins in the hands of a skilled player, or honestly, you don't even have to be skilled, you just have to memorize the combo and then you win. Because there's no way to escape it without combo breaker. Every armor attack will lose and you can't avoid the setup either, it's guaranteed. And as of right now, Netherrealm has not done anything to fix this issue, but honestly, I'm not sure how they would because there's so many different ways to get this infinite to work. Now, thankfully, the good news is most players aren't actually able to do the infinite or don't even know it exists because most casual players just don't research stuff like that. So that's the one silver lining. But the bad news is if you watching this video get good enough in Mortal Kombat 1, then you'll rise through the ranks and encounter these annoying Cyrax players. You will get hit by that infinite and you will want to quit the game. Okay, next up, let's talk about Havoc. I love this character's glow up, but I still must admit he's annoying to fight against. He's got overheads and lows that are very tricky to block, but somehow his unblockable is even more dangerous. It leads to 31% without any meter. He can also hit you with the unblockable neck snap that guarantees a second combo. This character is quite ridiculous. And his projectiles are decent too. I feel like not enough people talk about how good Havoc's projectiles are. They lead to combos and are safe on block, and from a slight distance become plus on block and guarantee his approach. So yeah, Havoc is a menace right now. I would not be shocked if Netherrealm nerfs him, but I kinda hope they don't because he was bottom tier for the entire game's lifespan until recently. Oh boy, but next up let's talk about my favorite character to play, Nitara. Just like Havoc, she got a very big glow up in the recent update. Tons of buffs, which makes her way more annoying than she already was. Because even back when Nitara was low tier, she was still annoying because she could fly all over the place, get in your face instantly, and then get crazy damage if she hits you. And then Netherrealm buffed her, so she's way more annoying now. She can just EX dive kick whenever she feels like it because it's safe on block, but if it hits you, she gets a full combo. And then with Farah, everything she does is safe anyway. Just call the character in, go for the overhead, and you're completely safe. So yeah. Natara is just spazzing out all over the screen, constantly jumping, flying around, and is now safe on everything, and can kill you in two combos because her combo damage is crazy high. Next up, let's talk about Johnny Cage. What's there to say about this character that has not been said over and over again? Plus frames for days, he's safe on everything, his mix-ups can be good too, and with the right cameo, his armor ability is one of the best in the game. He also has crazy good combo damage with his all-star ability. I forget what it's called, but you all know what I'm talking about. You fill up the hype meter and then activate it to get crazy good combos. And speaking of combos, Johnny Cage gets one off of both throws. Forward throw and back throw both lead to a full
full combo, which is also crazy. Honestly, the only reason this character is not further up on the list is because we've had time to adjust to his nonsense, and also he's got no projectile, so that's good. But next up, let's talk about Sindel. In the hands of a skilled player, she is an absolute nightmare and super annoying. Double overhead into low, and with the right cameo, she can do an instant overhead low that is nearly impossible to block, and both options lead to a full combo, so that's super annoying. She screams in your face to guarantee a new reset at the end of every single combo, and her cameo partner recovers faster, and she can disable your cameo partner, which is still crazy. I can't believe Netherrealm gave her that. Now, thankfully, most players don't have the skill to operate Sindel at this level, but if you ever do encounter a skilled Sindel, you're gonna learn the meaning of rage real quick. Last but not least, least for this top row, we have Kenshi. When this character first came out, I respected the Kenshi players because what they were doing seemed genuinely difficult. But all these months later, I'm just convinced it's muscle memory. You're not actually thinking, I could blindfold you just like Kenshi, and I bet you could do the exact same combos and setups because you're just going through the motions. It's all muscle memory, no thinking or reacting required. Which is still kind of crazy in its own regard, but not nearly as impressive as it used to be. Kenshi players are all just doing the the same thing lately. They summon the spirit, then surround you with constant pressure, and a lot of characters don't even have a means of escaping this, which leads to a full combo, and then a reset, and they're in your face all over again. It's super annoying. And the combo damage is crazy high too. But alright, next up it's time for the annoying tier. Leading the charge is Lu Kang. The zoning master of this game, his fireballs and keep away are super annoying. But even up close, he's still a monster, because Netherrealm buffed him. He's got new mix-ups, and he can combo without meter, which is always strong in this game. And also, for some reason, he gets to combo off his throw super easily. So yeah, Liu Kang is an absolute menace, and if he corners you, the combo damage can get high. Like, really high. I don't think people realize that Liu Kang has, like, top-tier damage in the corner. In fact, Liu Kang is the only character in the game with a fully invincible attack. I don't think people realize that. Not armored, just completely invincible. Liu Kang is the only character in the game that has that, which also makes him annoying. But okay, next up, let's talk about Scorpion. Once Farrah got to the game, this man became a menace because he already had fantastic range and could teleport instantly to get behind you and force an overhead mix-up, but now with Farah, everything he does is completely safe and his combo damage is off the charts. Just like Natara, he can kill you in two combos. In fact, I would argue that Scorpion's mobility is better than Natara's, it's just not quite as annoying because it's the one teleport instead of constantly air dashing in any direction. But even so, Scorpion has some of the best mobility and range in the entire game with crazy high combo damage to boot, and Farah makes him safe on pretty much everything. Next up, let's talk about Sector. This character's annoying factor is minimal, but can be used over and over again to a very spammy extent, which makes her quite frustrating to fight. Not only is Sector's keep away quite good, but that homing rocket guarantees a combo if she throws you, and there's no way to break the throw or escape in any way. She'll throw you, the missile hits, she gets up, and there's a full combo every single time. Which is very annoying and makes her extremely strong because she'll knock you down, send out the missile, go for a throw or another mix-up like the overhead, and just guarantee a new combo. It is wild how much this character can do with one touch. She'll combo you, then reset you until you die. And also her counter keep away is good too. She can fly for Pete's sake. This character is mad annoying. I love playing her just like Natara and almost every character on this roster actually is very fun to play, but even I must admit that Sector is a nightmare in the right hands. But then we have Ermac, and I almost respect this character when they're annoying, because it all comes down to dash cancels and well-timed mix-ups, which are not easy to do. If you tried for yourself the first time, your hand's gonna cramp up guaranteed. It's a lot of very fast button presses and very precise timing. Button presses. Very fast button presses and very precise timing with this character. And he's not a keep away monster, he's always in your face. He's the rushdown character of this game, so I almost want to admire him, but still I must admit, it's very annoying when he's doing overhead, dash cancel, projectile, dash cancel, cancel, instant air low, instant air overhead, cancel, cancel, cancel. It is not fun to try and block that nonsense. But then we have Quan Chi. Netherrealm was smoking some weird drugs when they buffed this character because his portal loop nonsense does not make sense to me. I don't know how to deal with it. And for anyone watching, he will summon one portal, then 
summon a second portal that constantly drains your meter, and that gives Quan Chi armor, which means you can't escape his mix-ups. He just gets to do them in your face, or even worse, he'll bait your attack and then just attack right after, and you're still in the animation, so you can't block or anything. He gets a free combo. And he'll just keep looping that, and because the portal is draining your meter, you don't get Combo Breaker. It just won't let you use it. Even if your meter looks full, you don't get access to Combo Breaker. It's wild. And any skilled Quan Chi player can do this on top of his great keep away and amazing counter keep away and his decent damage combos. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't know what to do against these portals. I've tried to counter them and I just get beat every single time, especially with the right cameo character. I don't know what to do against Quan Chi. I really don't. In fact, it's my tier list, so I'm gonna go ahead and put him in front of Ermac. I'm doing it. Next up, we have Omni Man. This guy can just pounce on your head at any point during the match and evade all of your attacks with that parry, which is also crazy. But that's not what makes him super annoying. You need Jax for that. Yeah, the unblockable ground pound combined with Omni-Man's flight makes him nearly impossible to escape. If you try blocking, the unblockable will launch you for a combo. If you try to jump away or escape the unblockable, Omni-Man's flying attack will guaranteed hit you for a full combo. It's an almost impossible to escape situation, and it's really easy for the Omni-Man player to set up, so they'll just do it over and over again. And then we have Reptile. I respect this character and anybody who's skilled with him, but even so, it's very annoying when he turns invisible and goes for a mix-up that you literally can't see coming. It could be a throw that leads to a full combo. It could be a low that leads to a full combo, or it could be an overhead that leads to a full combo and is also plus on block, which it should be, but I'm just saying a low risk and a super high reward, and Reptile can do this all the time. He's just constantly going invisible, and his combo damage hurts too, so this character is a menace. He's a menace. Don't forget about those projectiles either. Reptile's always had some decent projectiles. Those bubbles, oh my gosh, so annoying. I hate the acid bubbles. They're so frustrating. I love Reptile, but fighting against a skilled one is not fun. He's just constantly invisible for half the match. But now finally to end this row, we have Raiden. And the main reason why is that electric field. I forget the name of it, but he'll make a pose like this, and lightning just circles around him, and then he summons a cameo character to make him safe on literally everything. And if you don't master the flawless block timing, you will take tons of chip damage from this. So Raiden can go for literally anything, then cancel into that electric field, and then summon the cameo to keep himself safe. And you'll take tons of block damage every single time. Which is already frustrating, but on top of that, Raiden's teleport got a buff. So now it's nearly instant and can do all new kinds of shenanigans. And don't forget about the chargeable projectile that's also annoying as well. With the right cameo partner, Raiden really can be a menace. At the highest level of play, he's not quite as big of a deal, but for most of us, a good Raiden player is very annoying to fight. All right, but next up, it's time for the mildly irritating category. I'm gonna put Katana here because she's got some really annoying projectiles and she can counter zone. She ducks and throws that fan over her head which means you can't hit her, but she can hit you. The fan NATO setups are super annoying. She'll end a combo, summon the tornado, and then throw you, and it's impossible to escape this. If you jump, the portal hits you, so you can't break the throw, you can't jump away. It's a guaranteed combo. If you don't have breaker, then hold all this damage because she's gonna hurt you. And if all that wasn't wild enough already, Katana also has some really good whiff punishes and some great low pokes as well, and she can combo off her back throw just like Liu Kang. So Katana is a a bit of a menace. I respect her a bit more than other characters though because she can't kill you in two combos. It's gonna take at least three. So yes, she's annoying to fight, but at least it's not set play. You know, you have time to build the meter for a breaker. You have a chance to come back. It's three or four combos, not just two before you die. Next up, we have Sub-Zero. This man's Ice Clone projectile is crazy good. If he's even slightly far away from you, he can just spam that thing over and over again. If you try to jump it, he can react and anti-air you or just do the ice clone and you're pretty much guaranteed to fall on it. This character is not bad in this game. Does he deserve some buffs? Absolutely, but that does not make him any less annoying to fight against because that ice clone projectile is wild. In fact, it destroys other projectiles, so this guy can be a menace at keep away. But once he gets close, he can be annoying too because the overhead and a low both lead to full combos and with the right cameo character, you can keep him safe on both. And for people like me with the reaction time of a zombie, that overhead lands 
hands way more often than it should. And despite all the memes online, Sub-Zero's combo damage is fine. This guy gets like 40% for one bar now, he's fine. When it comes to damage I mean, I still think he needs some buffs, there's way too many gaps in his strings, the Ice Clone could be a bit better, but then again, Cameo Sub-Zero got an Ice Clone ability, which might help Bihan a bit, I don't know. Next up, let's talk about Ashra. This character is good at pretty much everything, she's a jack of all trades, her overhead can be super annoying to deal with because it hops over other attacks and leads to a full combo without meter, but mainly it's her teleport that makes her really annoying. When she's in her dark mode and everything goes purple, she can cancel her teleport right in front of your face, and that teleport goes through everything, not just projectiles, but also physical attacks. So she'll just fly in, cancel it, and then go for something. It's really crazy how easily she can close the gap with that move. It makes her mad annoying. And next up, let's talk about Shang Tsung. Yes, he's low tier, but even so, his keep away is still traumatizing players to this day. Keep in mind, most players are casual, okay? They're not even skilled, they're just playing the game and trying to have fun, and then in comes this guy spamming projectiles all day, and shifting forms constantly, and changing into the cameo characters now, which is awesome that he can do that, but it makes him even better at annoying people and irritating them. So this guy is a menace, make no mistake. Does he deserve buffs? Yes, absolutely, just like Sub-Zero, but even so, Shang Tsung can be mildly irritating in the right hands. And then we have Melina. Her overhead just denies any wake up. It does, like it'll beat every single armor attack in the game except for Havoc. Everyone else in the game just can't do wake up against Melina. She'll win every time. So already that's annoying. But then on top of that, her combo damage is almost the best in the game and she has that air spinny attack that locks onto your location and with the right cameo she's completely safe. So yeah, this character can definitely be irritating. But now it's time for a surprise pick. Garrus. This man is considered very low tier, but even so, I must say, it is so annoying to watch him run away and get his health back with that annoying rewind ability. It's also super annoying when he freezes time instantly, and I forget that he can do that, and he just gets a free combo. And after the newest update, his overhead leads to a full combo now too, so at most levels of play, I think Garrus can be an absolute menace, and even at the pro tournament level, I've seen people abuse his rewind, and it's just so annoying to watch him get his health back and just draw out the match as long as possible. If you fight Garrus, the rounds take so long because he's just constantly rewinding, running away, and getting his health back, which is irritating. Alright, but now finally, it's time for the not annoying category. Tanya is here now, which is hilarious, but it's because she got nerfed really bad. She got some buffs too, but the stuff that got nerfed was the annoying stuff about her. Like her spinny kick got nerfed into the ground. You can no longer abuse that, so she no longer has the best armor attack and pressure in the game and all the free chip damage. Instead, she's more powerful with teleports and stuff, but that makes her feel a bit more manageable. So she's still a good character. She's just no longer top five and also not extremely annoying. Before that nerf, she would have been in the pure rage category. Next up, we have Noob Saibot. I'm just throwing all these characters out because whenever I fight these characters, I just feel respect. Whether the character is low tier, mid tier, or top tier, when I fight these characters and the opponent's doing skilled stuff with them, I just feel respect. I can't even get a even if some things they do are frustrating, like Lee Mei's plus frames, or the fact that Rain can set up portals and do teleport shenanigans, I still just feel respect. I think these characters are rounded, and therefore they don't feel mad, cheap, and annoying to me. But then we have the bottom row. Netherrealm, please save these characters. They need buffs. Please make them more fun, make them more viable. Kung Lao got some buffs here and there, so maybe he could be in the mildly irritating category, I think that's fair to say. But for everyone else in this row, Netherrealm, please save them. You don't have to make them top tier, but at least make them more fun to play with and to fight against as well. They feel like they're just lacking stuff now. And for Peacemaker, I get it. He got nerfed hard because he was so annoying and powerful before. But what about Smoke and Takeda? I feel like they need a bit more love in this game. So there you have it everyone my tier list for the most annoying characters in mortal kombat 1 let me know any and all of your thoughts in the comments down below i have no doubt this video is going to upset some people and cause some controversy online but please understand it's just for entertainment it's just a fun video and most importantly of all it's just my opinion so don't let it rattle your cages too much and let me know how you feel in the comments down below which character do you hate the most in mortal kombat 1 thanks for watching my tier list video and i hope you enjoyed if you did please please leave a like down below, it helps my channel out a ton, and if you haven't already, keep that combo going by subscribing and ringing that bell so you never miss any future videos. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs!